Hello everybody, welcome to today's video cast. Um, like I said in the, in the video, I'm here today with Derek Popard and we're going to be talking about training the racehorse barefoot. Um, now, we are both farriers, Derek, but we both appreciate that the barefoot is, um, is a miracle of nature and um, it's, you're never going to do better than it. But we're not here to say that um, compare barefoot to shoes, are we? We're just talking about training the race horse barefoot and some of the benefits of that. Exactly. Um, so, but Derek, if you could uh, introduce yourself, um, please let people know who you are. Hey guys, uh, my name is Derek Popard, a farrier since the early 80s. Um, started off in South Africa as a plater, then I went across to America and specialised in blue one shoeing and corrective shoeing, so they say. Um, and then from there I went on to Dubai and worked for the Royal Palace and um, I've now, for the last 10 years, I worked for Godolphin, which is uh, Sheikh Mohammed's premier racing group um, and I travel between Newmarket uh, for about nine months of the year and three months of the year in, in, in Dubai for the racing carnival. Brilliant, thank you. So, uh, Derek, you saw the video there of me doing, doing the job. Thank you very much for sending me the bits. Um, this is what I ended up with. Um, now, how, how, did you, how did you think I did? <laughs> I'm very impressed because uh, you've got everything square exactly how you should do. Um, you know, you've positioned the shoe perfectly on the foot and I think what's nice about the system is that because there are no nails, you can actually place the foot where you think the breakover should be or where the horse needs its breakover. So <laughs> in that respect, I think you've done a great job there. Well done. Good. I mean, I found, I found the system really easy really quick um so i can see why um why you'd call it formula one shoeing like you you did in your other video um but this isn't your first attempt at a system is it derek you've um, <laughs> a few other goes um, maybe you'd like to talk to us through through these and your reasoning behind your journey yeah, of course man well listen you know ever since i've started i've realized that you know shoeing is, is is a necessary evil so to speak and um and I've always thought of there must be an alternative way, as a lot of farriers, modern farriers do. So on the top left there is the, <laughs> I tried a strap on horseshoe, um, which worked. And I did gallop a horse in it, but a lot of rubbing. So I gave up on that one. Right. Uh, in the middle, top middle, top right is I uh, created the shoe out of a cast and then and used an ex ex expander to put the shoe on. And then two little screws on the edge to hold it in position. But not secure enough very very bulky bottom left is uh, 10 years ago is the quick shoe which is now being taken over as a former hoof um, i used that as an alternative for the beginning and then also at the bottom there you can see there i took a, a booty kind of shoe and then uh, it's equilox and iron filings i put at the bottom of it as a wear plate so I, i've been trying lots of different methods to try and get horses barefoot or as close to barefoot as i possibly can yeah, and, and I, I suppose the reasons are because going along with some of the studies that have been shown, um, for instance, Peel et al. 2010 showed that um, gallop training actually reduced the angles of the hoof. Um, is that something that you've experienced in your... Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the stress of galloping at speed. You know, they say speed kills, speed definitely hurts also the speed. Um, and the, and, and there seems, you know, they're fine as they start their training, but as we ask them to do more, we yeah. will find that, that it will take strain. Yeah, and obviously they're shod from a very young age as well, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. You know, a lot of them are sort of shod at the sales, you know, to go to the sales. So you yeah. can imagine now, they're not even a year, well, just under a year old. Yeah, and, and, and that obviously correlates with a couple of other studies that showed that the general population of thoroughbreds had flatter hooves um, with a greater than three to one ratio of heel to toe, a greater than five degree difference between the heel and the toe. Um, they had disproportionate width and lengths. Um, and like you said, they're just, just generally thinner and more susceptible to deformation. Um, that's something that you, you obviously struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis with the thoroughbreds? Yeah, very much so, because, you know, like what you've seen there, you've got a horse with a longer pest and it's going to try and go get a longer, longer a lever arm on the, on the foot itself, and, and that just creates so many issues. And the, the hoof wall itself does stretch out. 
and it thins out and the whole thing collapses under itself. So you know, we've got to try and get that back in a functional position, A, to get the horse training, let alone get the horse to race and then to try and get it to win. So, you know, we are, that's our mission is to get the horse to win a race. Well, this is definitely something that I see on a regular basis. This particular picture was presented to me as an X race horse. Um, so quite often by the time they get to me as an X race horse, um, those kind of parameters that have been stated there are really, you know, quite obvious. Um, uh, and a lot of that comes down to their genetics. So, I mean, Balka um, showed the difference between stronger foot and a weaker foot. And you've got the two different types here. So on the left, you've got a stronger foot, which has got nice thick lateral cartilages and lateral cartilages that kind of go all the way through and touch each other. Um, the vascular structures are within the, cap the um, cartilages. And also the digital cushion contains elastic tissue, fat tissue, like the weaker foot, but also contains a lot of fibrocartilage. Whereas the one on the right would be more what you're seeing in a thoroughbred. So we're seeing much thinner lateral cartilages, much finer foot in general. And also quite often the, the um, digital cushions don't contain the same amount of fibro cartilage. Um, so that's, that's where we're getting our weaker foot. And, um, and then obviously this, this hemodynamic system that we see here is, is what's getting pounded over and over again as they go down the racetrack. Um, so we can see how they would, you know, the thoroughbred may break down a bit sooner. Um, and that's, that's what your, your experience as well, isn't it, Derek? The, Absolutely. You know, I think, you know, we, we can always put it to the same thing as a Formula One car. It's, it's refined. It's, it's built for speed. Um, uh, and, and, and they've bred it for speed. So you can imagine now they've, they've actually ignored a lot of the what's good for a horse, but what's fast for a horse. And uh, that's where we yeah. end up with what you see yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah. So, so although the structures are finer and lighter, it means that obviously then they may be less durable. And then um, Balker and, and Poss also suggested that some of this could be due to the early application of shoes because the hemodynamic system doesn't get the same chance to develop. Now, obviously that needs further studies, but um, that could also be, be a part of it. Um, so, but also, you, um, you think one of the main reasons for this kind of collapse of the thoroughbred foot is actually, as you said before, the fact that they're being pounded down the track every day. Yeah, it is, you know, and also you know, put a shoe on, it's, it's, it's just slightly more of a lever arm. You know, we can't actually set a shoe too much back on the racehorse, you know, it, it's actually shot at perimeter foot. Um, because they haven't got the depth of foot that we can do that to. So a lot of times we've got a lever on that's there, we've got the vibration, the shock, um, there's no, a lot of time no frog support. Horses travel a long way on, on toll roads, especially in, in the new market area, and they do wear their shoes out, and there's a lot of vibration that also goes through. So, you know, you take a combination of the, that environment plus the confirmation of the horse itself, and then you'll see the issues that, that come through. Yeah, and obviously that goes along with these studies which I've shown here that um, showed that with a foot over, a shod foot over a bare foot, that there was higher landing velocities, higher peak forces and, and higher and long, longer impact vibrations. So that kind of begs the question, why do we race them in shoes at all? Um, but if we look at the findings of the British Horse Racing Authority, um, they did an analysis of 12 months of racing and found that there was an increased risk of horse slipping um, if they were only partially shod. Now, so, you know, that would make you think that the shoe is providing increased traction, increased grip, protecting the foot, as you said, if they're, you know, they're working down the roads and stuff as well for training. So it's about safety and performance. Would you agree with that or would you have any i'm a bit dubious about about that to be fair um, purely because of the fact that if the horse has been conditioned to be trained barefoot the foot has been um, built up and it has got a good frog support it's got everything built as a barefoot you know i found that my horses could gallop on 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 a very very tight grass track barefoot even in a slippery wet condition yeah, um, and uh, they felt very comfortable, and, and the jockeys, and you know, in, in the beginning we were very skeptical, but you know, at the end they could see that the horse can feel its foot, 
um, and they know exactly where they are placing their foot each time. So uh, yeah. I've had no issues with that whatsoever. But that obviously comes down to the facilities and and because um, you mentioned before that like in new market there's a lot of roads that they're down they're going down the roads a lot and there's abrasive surfaces so that's where the protection part comes in because they do have fine feet so they need that that protection oh part. absolutely you know, because you know they are total uh, products of the environment that they're in there's, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind because i take the same horses you know back and forth between Newmarket and Dubai, and I follow them on, you know, over two or three year periods. So I can see the, 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 the positives and the negatives of both um, yeah. all the way through. Yeah. Um, so well, we've got a case here for you to chat to us about, um, because obviously this brings us back to to what you've created with the Hoofcast system um, and trying to get the both worlds, if you like, the best of of the. Um, protection while while being able to train barefoot so you like to talk to us about this absolutely so this is a typical thoroughbred racehorse here it's got a bit of a medial insert of the coffin bone into into the foot itself um the hoof wall is very very weak it doesn't grow much foot um there's a huge lever arm on the on the on the lateral side as you can see the bottom right picture there um it, it does grow off set and I find you know, it's got, always got a sore medial heel, it gets a corn. Uh, by putting a hoof cast on, I'm reinforcing that entire foot. And as you can see on the top right there, by, by hoof casting it, you can actually rebuild the foot almost to, to a certain degree. And uh, this has kept this horse very sound and very competitive. I mean, you know, he's, 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 he's pretty one of my better horses. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Well, when I was looking at this picture, not, and the bottom right-hand corner is obviously the foot when it was being shod, right, regularly. Um, and the difference between, between that foot and, and the bottom left, where you've got it, where you've got it, obviously bare foot for a while, how long is the difference between those two? That would be six months from, uh, actually probably less more, probably about four, between four and five months. So five um, from the, in the cast yeah. rather than in the yeah and that, is, that is correct you can clearly see well i can that there's there's a better medial lateral balance uh, and the hoof just looks stronger and then um also what i liked about this was if you look at the top left now even though it's a stronger foot he's still got you know a long toe low heel kind of conformation he's still got a slightly broken back hoof past an axis when you actually look at the top right where you've put the system on, you can see that you've created quite a nice hoof pass and axis. Although he's not standing in the exact same position, you can clearly see that that is a better looking foot. So, so you're able to achieve that with the cast as well. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, just, it's a total reinforcement of the, of the foot. So you can imagine if you've got a very, very thin wall and you've reinforced it, it's going to stop over movement. It's going to stop yeah. uh, the, the collapse of it, and that's and that's exactly what it does. And then you take that and train it barefoot, which you see on the on the bot, bottom and left and top left. You'll see how you can actually change the horse's foot and make it stronger. Yeah. So the reason you put the shoe on that's for racing because it's a legal requirement, right? So that have... is correct. That yeah. is correct. Yeah. And also in in, in Newmarket, you're on the top right. That's Newmarket. The horse. We have to, the horses walk a long way to the track on, a, on an asphalt tar road. Yeah. And they will wear, he'll, they'll wear that shoe out in, in less than two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Well, the morphology that we can see here is definitely something that I've experienced um, with um, rehabbing thoroughbreds barefoot. Um, this is an, one example. This, was, this change was in one trimming period. So we're in five weeks. Um, and you can clearly see the toe sh lever arm shorter, the width of the shape of the foot is more rounded, the frog has, has taken up more of the caudal aspect of the foot, so it's, the, the frog's not as contracted, and it just generally looks, looks, um, looks tighter and less flared everywhere, really. It's just, uh, and this is a morphology that happened in, just in five weeks. Um, and that corresponds with a study by Malone and Davies, which found that the sole length decreased in a bare foot, which is the shortening of that toe, and the circumference increased, which is that where it's changing shape and becoming a wider foot. Um, now, 
I think some of this can probably be attributed to the expansion and contraction of the foot, because we mentioned before about the hemodynamic system, where obviously without without the shoe on, everything, all the structures are working as they should, and, and they're, they're, there's less of that vibration forces. Um, but there's a study by Röpsdorf that actually studied the difference in the expansion and contraction of um, a barefoot versus a shod foot, and found that um, the shod foot did reduce the expansion and contraction. So I think that goes a long way towards the morphology that we can see. Is that something that you um, you see happening in the? Absolutely. You know, I take the same horses through from here to to Dubai, um, and it's, it's exactly what I find. You know, after after three months, I've got a totally different foot to my hands, and and I've seen the difference in the way the horses. Uh, run as well you know they are, i think they they definitely improve so that's that's the same horse and you take it from newmarket to dubai and you can see the change in oh absolutely yeah you know this is this is chalk and cheese you know and and, it, 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 and i've seen them and they're running you know yeah. solidly as well which is which is fantastic yeah yeah amazing so there's a few other parameters as well that have been studied in terms of the morphology of the of the barefoot um Clayton et al. 2011 discovered elevation of the heel um, angle and the sole angle of the distal phalanx. Mullen and Davies, this was something that I found interesting, actually found that um, the circumference of the coronet band um, decreased in the shod foot um, and also found that the hoof angle increased in the bare foot. Um, and then Prosky discovered that there was an increase in digital cushion depth after a period of time in the barefoot. Do you, is that something you've noticed with the? Yeah, I have actually, I've, I've noticed the foot gets deeper, you know, and, and before it gets too deep, it, it'll, it'll, it'll ball sole, it'll, it'll, ball, it, it'll hold its sole in a lot better. Um, but also you find, I think the digital cushion is not as compressed as it was before. So it yeah. gives, it's probably got a bit more room to breathe, so to speak. Yeah, because there's, the, I think there's debate, isn't there, about whether the digital cushion can actually regenerate or not. Yeah, I don't. I'm not too sure about that, but I do know that if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, if you got a squash ball and you let and you let the and you take the pressure off it, I think yeah. it'll come back slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, having said all of that, I've definitely noticed um, with the ex race horses that I get referred to me um, the the change in morphology with the use of pads. Um, now, going back to the Rupster strut study, he also showed that. When you applied padding to the foot, you had um, some of the return back to the expansion and contraction that you had in the bare foot. So that kind of helps us to understand a little bit more about the fact that the hemodynamic system is having a role in, in that. Um, so um, this is a couple of X racers that at the time of these were, were hunting, so they were still doing pretty hard work. Um, but I've got positive morphology with shoes, with solar and frog support. The shoe placement, which, you know, like you are saying, you, with the racing, you're looking kind of more for a perimeter fit. But I was able to come under the toes a little bit more, reduce that lever arm a bit. Um, and then obviously the, something really important is shoeing cycle. Um, making sure that these horses are shod regularly enough because, because of the angle of their hoof, um, those angles change much quicker when through hoof, hoof growth. So, but so having said all of that about barefoot morphology, I have achieved pretty good morphology from other modern materials. Have you have you used those? Have you had the same experience? Pretty much so. Yeah, but you basically, I mean, by putting by putting a, a, the, the, the padding underneath you, you, you actually you're almost simulating a barefoot in, in yeah. some way because you know yeah. in the ground the ground force is up there. And uh, yeah, definitely, I think that, that, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. So obviously one of the things you, we've mentioned before and you touched on a couple of times is the fact that you need to have the right facilities to, to, to be able to do this and the difference between Newmarket and, and Dubai. And this is obviously your place in, in Dubai, right? That's correct, yeah. This is Sheikh Mohammed built this out in Dubai. It is, as you can see, there's not a toll road in sight and the sand tracks, we've got a beautiful sand track to train on as well. You know, the horse is a total product of its environment. You know, the confirmation is very important, but you multiply the environment into that and everything changes. 
and by, by creating this, to me, this is the perfect, perfect environment to train horses in. And, um, and I've seen the results as well. So yeah, it, yeah. it's a beautiful facility. So this is, this is another view. Um, yep. this, is, this is your training track, isn't it, here in Dubai? That's correct, yep. As you can see, so we've got a dirt track, in the, a nine foot long dirt track in the middle. Um, and then on the, on the far outside, you can see how tight the, the, the grass track is, the bends on the, on the far right and far left corner. Yeah. Now, we're training the horses on there barefoot um, and, and on that sand track barefoot uh, with, without, without any issues and also in, they are really getting very, very strong feet through it. Yeah, but like you say, there, there's, no, there's no tarmac in sight, is there? So they're not, having, they're not wearing out their shoes or, or what would be their feet. Um, so here, we, here we've got a couple of videos of, of the guys training. These are barefoot here, aren't they? Training barefoot. Yeah, Yep, that's correct. This is the galloping barefoot on the dirt um, and very, very comfortable, very, very strong footed. After, after three months of, of being there, but remember, we, we have, you have to treat them accordingly. You know, I don't trim much foot off. You know, we keep it rounded yeah. off uh, on a regular basis. You know, probably every two weeks to get them. Any little burrs come there, you go straight into them. Um, and it's just, when I race them, I'll put the shoes on just for the day that they're racing. I won't even dress that foot. It'll just be a shoe will be nailed on top of the foot it's been training on. You'll race, um, and the shoe is taken off you know, less than 24 hours later. Yeah. So, and then obviously, you don't. You're not able to achieve the same thing at Newmarket, are you? Because of the the facilities. So that's where the shoes have to come, and that's where you've you've got that system with the 3D printer with the removable shoes. That's that's correct, Yogi. So basically, you know, this is new market. The horses probably got almost two kilometer walk to the track on a tar road, so they wear their shoes out. If you've got a horse that wears its shoes excessively, and we do have some that'll wear their shoes out under a week, you know, it's an aluminium plate. So if I, if I can put the the interface on and then change just the shoe, the interface will stay on the foot itself. So that'll give the foot time to actually grow out and, and, and function as a foot rather than be have nails put in every couple of weeks because um, you yeah. know you keep nailing a shoe over and over again you will end up in trouble yeah yeah so that interface allows you to to quickly change the shoe without taking the cast off without reapplying any nails you're just off and off like formula one absolutely and then you know, what's nice about that is that once it is finished you can just take the interface off and you've still got the casting material to stay on, which is yeah. still your reinforcement for the foot. Yeah. So I think, I think um, to kind of end this, we can, we can kind of con conclude that, um, you know, there definitely is benefits to the, the horses training um, barefoot. Um, you get better morphology of the feet, but the reality is that shoes are necessary. They're, they're legally required. Um, and obviously, it massively depends on on the facilities that you've got. Absolutely, you know, if you've got the facilities that you can do it, I would I would recommend it. If you haven't, you know, I think what you can do then is you have to be forthright and and, and try and keep that foot as as close to barefoot as you can, to in, in a certain respect, by reinforcing it, by helping it along, um, and you know, doing what you can as a farrier to get that horse to function properly. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much, Derek. Um, that's enlightening, I think. Um, certainly goes along with what I've been seeing and kind of um, feeling the way to go with, with a lot of my rehab stuff, actually, is um, trying to encourage barefoot. If you can get past that transition period, <laughs> which can be quite painful, um, you, do see, you do see great results. But... Again, we're not, we're not um, pro barefoot or anti shoes. We're talking about what's best for the particular horse in the environment that they're, that they're in. That's the summary of it all. You know, what's best for the horse um, in, in the condition it's, it's working in, what can we do to help it? Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, it's been great having you. Um, and hope we can chat again soon. Yeah, thank you very much, Jack. Eh? Cheers. Bye bye.